through the, through the year, except for July and August, our church meets on Sunday nights at this time, and our customary tradition is that we have a buffet at the back of the room that you're welcome to take advantage of in just a moment. And uh, in July and August, we don't meet on Sunday nights, but we made a special uh, schedule for tonight because we wanted to hear from those folks who made the trip to Normandy for the 75th anniversary of D-Day. What you see playing on the screen is a video that Suzanne McGinnis created, and she'll be saying a little more about that in just a few moments. But uh, we want to begin by having a prayer together. After that prayer, we invite you all to go back and uh, um, have some of the food that's there. And while you're eating, we'll get started. So Suzanne, you'll need to wait a while to fill your plate because you're up first, okay? Uh, so uh, anyway, that being said, again, welcome. And to all of our guests that are with us tonight, we are glad that you came. Let's take a moment and have prayer together. And uh, after that prayer, then please go and avail yourself of the snacks that are there. And as soon as everybody's kind of settled, we'll get started because we've got several folks that we want to hear from in the course of the evening. Okay? Very good. Steve Brown, would you word our prayer for us, please, sir? Amen. And just for the sake of clarification, Suzanne will begin. Jim, you and George will be up next. And Carol, if you don't mind, you'll follow them. Okay? All right. Please help yourself. And as soon as everyone's been served, we'll get started.
I'm not sure. Is this this isn't uh,
All right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> if I may have your attention, please. If you can smack quietly, please enjoy your food, but give your attention this way. Before Suzanne comes, I do want to mention one thing briefly, because we do have some families here this evening. A week from tomorrow, we begin our soccer VBS camp here at First Baptist Church of Oakville. It starts at 8.30 in the morning, goes from 8.30 until noon, Monday through Friday. That's July 22nd through 26th. Uh, it's for children K through 6th grade. And uh, like I said, there is no charge. It is a soccer camp that will be led by uh, athletes from Missouri Baptist University. And then we will also do a vacation Bible school component as part of the morning activities. I have registration slips. If anyone is interested, if you'd like to take one home with you, share it with someone else, or if you're here and you have someone you'd like to register, there are copies and there are pins back there, and you're welcome to fill them out, okay? So I wanted to share that with you. I appreciate everyone being here. Thank you to all of you who brought food. We always appreciate your willingness to share. Hope you enjoy the food. Hope you enjoy the program. And now... Suzanne, please. And by the way, I think I've already mentioned that these pictures are Suzanne's as part of a, um, a video presentation. Do you want me to recycle that if it ends? Okay. Yeah, if you don't, sure. All right. Just come and share with us, and then, Jim, you'll be up next. Hi. I am not a public speaker, just so you all know. Um, so five years ago, the Oakville Band um, played on the USS Missouri down in Hawaii. Cheryl over there was part of that wherever she is. Um, was actually part of that band trip. Three years ago, the band played at Washington, D.C. at the President's Cup, which led to this summer being invited to one of 13 bands in the country and the only high school band from the U.S. or from Missouri um, to play at D-Day for the 75th anniversary. So that's how the Oakville Band happened to be. Well, since we had a few of our youth that were going, um, Dixie O'Shea started the campaign to get George, our World War II vet, to go with us. So, Dixie, amazing, thank you, because over there, George was a star. And I wish he could have had more time with the kids, so the kids could have had, but I know there's a lot of the parents that are here, and a lot of the parents are here because they got to know George. And it was an amazing experience from the beginning. Um, so 175 band kids, 300 of us shadow trip parents, families, etc. went. So we took up six buses. So day one fly-in day, most of the planes made it except for two. One got stuck in Minneapolis for weather and one made it halfway across the ocean and had a radio problem and had to go back to Boston and spend the night in Atlanta and came in. So two of our flights actually missed the D-Day presentations which was really sad. Um, but we did start day one. The people that made it landed and got, were lucky enough to get on the bus, got to see the town of Han Floor. I and my family got to spend, and a few of us other lucky people, got to spend five hours in the Charles de Gaulle Airport. Um, so I think Carol said she had some pictures from Han Floor because George and them, George and Jim and Doug landed on one of the later flights, so we basically made it to Han Floor in time to change the luggage to drive for another two, two hours to Han Floor on the bus to change luggage to drive two hours to a hotel, is what we got to do. Um, so day one was on D-Day. Um, we went to the Brittany American Cemetery. The kids performed. Um, the kids at both um, the American Cemetery and the Normandy American Cemetery at Omaha Beach on the second day took sand, I have a couple pictures, um, and spread some sand on the Missouri graves. Um, and I have pictures of Sean, there were some of the other kiddos um, that did that too. One of the biggest things that I saw was how respectful all of the kids were. All the bands, all the kids. Even though a lot of them don't get this, it really made World War II a little more real and they got to see. Um, so basically we did Brittany and then we went to Mount St. Michelle, um, which is basically on an island. So you have to park a mile and a half away and walk or take a shuttle over. So we got to spend a little bit of time exploring there. 
Um, the second day, we did the Normandy American Cemetery, and that was the day after all the dignitaries had come in for D-Day, so there was lots of extra seating, and it was, this, it was really set up great for us. Um, and then afterwards, um, we went to Aramanches. The kids got to enjoy a 360 movie. I hope they all enjoyed it. Um, and we were supposed to go to Point de Hoc and Utah Beach. I'm not sure, did your bus get to go to those? Okay, our buses did not get to go to those. Um, so I'm hoping Jim has some pictures. We ended up going straight to Aramanches because our bus driver didn't realize they drove us straight there. So we got a little extra time in the town, which was kind of nice. Um, but so on the way back, we ended up stopping at Juneau Beach, so we got an extra beach trip, which was actually the um, Canadian, or the Canadians came in. So, um, and one of the biggest thing there is they have a tank that actually got stuck and they had to build a bridge over the tank to keep fighting. Um, our last day in Normandy, we were in St. Mary Glace, where the kids did a concert, um, they did a parade. You'll see there's a picture of a church as it flips through, or I've got the pictures out on the table with some information too. Um, but if you see it, and there's the parachute hanging from the top of the church, because when they parachuted down, they kind of missed the square, or they weren't supposed to land in the exact center of the town. They were supposed to land a little off, but they <laughs> missed their mark and the one guy ended up landing and got caught on the church. So every year they celebrate because they were one of the first towns that were liberated. So they celebrate with the parade and the concert and they put up the parachute man every year. So that's kind of the really small gist of this amazing trip. And then at the end we went to Paris um, for a few days before we flew out or went on, I went on to London and beyond. Um, does anybody have questions? I know we got a couple other people talking or we can just wait. Jim, if you want to start and then we'll let you and George talk. Okay. One of the things that, uh, okay. Uh, one of the things you really need to realize is this is a, was a band trip to begin with, uh, primarily. Uh, but when we arrived, all right, when we arrived at the first ceremony at uh, St. James, France, for uh, the Brittany Cemetery that uh, Suzanne mentioned, we discovered very quickly that George was one of only nine World War II veterans in attendance at the ceremonies. Um, and that continued through the rest of the ceremonies in, in, uh, 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 on Utah Beach and whatnot the following day. Uh, but on day one, uh, it kind of began that George was treated as a VIP. Uh, George was recognized as one of the veterans. Uh, he uh, was brought up to the stage and sat with the other eight World War II veterans, and he was given a medal on day one. So George was given some pretty special treatment while we were uh, in Normandy. Um, So it was kind of, it's kind of neat to see George recognized and, and really treated well. So you guys would have been proud of George. He was, he was a, a really good uh, representative of, of the war. He, he treated uh, everybody well. Um, we have a lot of pictures of a lot of ladies in France who wanted to hug George. <laughs> and there's an awful lot of them. <laughs> And there's an awful lot of the ladies in France who gave George a kiss on the cheek. So, uh, and he just didn't mind it a bit. He didn't. And I took pictures of all of it. You know, all, to, all together I took 618 pictures. Now, we're not going to let you see all of them tonight and, and bore you guys with all of these kisses. But, but take my word for it, George got a lot of kissing while he was over in France. Uh, 
You got something to add to that, George? Well, I'll tell them about a few incidents, I guess, that we had. Go ahead. I don't know. Maybe I better. Uh, anyway, what I want to do, first of all, is thank all of you good people for sending me back to Prince. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good pleasure to go. And one way and another, it was kind of an eye-opener and uh, kind of a, a sad for me to see the... Oh, well, I won't get into that anyway. But anyway, uh, they treat us real well. And as uh, far as the bus, I mean, the airplane, and all of these things were concerned, they wheeled us around like we were babies, you know. And we were going through, and they would run behind us with a wheelchair. They'd be running. And here we are, I was going through the deal, and Jim was trying to keep up with me with his bad leg, you know. <laughs> so I, uh, I told this guy, I said, stop, you know. I said, uh, Jim is playing out there. He needs to rest up. And uh, if, if nothing else, let me walk a while, let him ride, you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah. I said, if that won't do it, maybe you just sit on my lap. <laughs> so the guy said, well, he would take care of that. So there was a wheelchair sitting close by. He went over and got the wheelchair, and he got the arm in one arm, me in the other one. And Jim and that chair, here we went across it throughout the uh, deal about 20 miles an hour, you know. So. But anyway, there was a lot of, uh, lot of incidents that happened that uh, I don't know, it would take uh, two or three days, or it took us nine days to make them. So anyway, uh, I don't know too much else to, you think of anything, Jim? That well, all three of them. We'll go through a few of the pictures and talk about it. Okay. Yeah, so we got the pictures, so they're going to show you the pictures. And uh, the uh, this is the uh, cemetery at St. James, France, the Brittany Cemetery, the Brittany American Cemetery, and. Uh, this was just from some of the kids' hats that kind of got set on the cemetery and whatnot. More people that were going through and uh, just taking a, a look through the cemetery before the ceremonies began and whatnot at, at St. James. Yeah. There were close to 6,000 in the Brittany American Cemetery, and I think it was a little over twice that at the, uh, uh, the American Cemetery at uh, Omaha Beach and, and, and whatnot. So uh, the ceremonies, there were bands from all over the country. There were uh, uh, not many high school bands, of course. You know, uh, Suzanne mentioned that earlier. But uh, uh, the, the ceremonies were really uh, well done and whatnot, and the cemetery, uh, the two cemeteries that we visited, there were ceremonies to begin uh, each of those days. That was on day one, day two. Uh, day three was the parade at St. Marie Inglés and whatnot. And by the way, uh, George was again given VIP status at the village, and he did participate in the parade. He was like the first veteran in the in the parade, so uh, he was he was pretty much given VIP treatment on all of those days that we spent at, at Normandy. So this is uh, the group that uh, uh, well I can't get it to go back. Uh, the group that you saw just in the slide just before this was the there they are. Uh, and this is the uh, New York City uh, Police and Fire Drum and Bugle Corps that was there at all of the ceremonies and whatnot. Uh, George got to meet all of those guys. They all wanted their picture made with George, and they thought he was like the neatest guy they ever met. So That's why I'm letting Jim talk here, because I didn't have time to talk. I sat there waiting for somebody to take a picture with me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, 
the way the, the prior slide was uh, at Utah Beach and whenever we arrived there on, on day two. Uh, this is a lot of the other pictures uh, that were taken uh, on that same uh, Utah Beach day. Um, this was on our flight over and this was the first lady that George met on the airplane on the way over to France. And uh, uh, she wanted to kiss him as well. So, uh, one of the things that happened, this was on an Air France flight, and the first thing they did was upgrade uh, Doug and George and I uh, to uh, the first class status uh, on the plane because of George, of course. Not, not because of any of us other guys. <laughs> And this is uh, flight attendants and uh, uh, all of the different people on the plane, all of the different uh, uh, people that were on the, on the plane and, and want, uh, wanted to come back and meet George. And that's just one of them right here. This is just some of the Normandy defenses that, uh, 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 the German defenses from back at World War II. This is the Utah Beach uh, uh, American Cemetery. One of the things that, that is uh, different about the American cemeteries over in uh, uh, Brittany and in the Utah Beach and whatnot, all these cemeteries and all of the graves are facing home. They're all facing the US, all of the soldiers' graves. And this is Patricia. Patricia was the uh, uh, lady who was our hostess on the bus tour for the entire week. Uh, she gave George lots of hugs and whatnot. Uh, over here on the left, you see uh, Barbara uh, on the right, just on George's left, and Donna uh, was the lady on, uh, on Barbara's right, and another one of the ladies on the bus and whatnot. All the ladies wanted to sit next to George, of course, and uh, George didn't mind at all. As a matter of fact, Barb is sitting right over here, and she came this evening to see our pictures. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Everybody got to sit next to George. All the ladies wanted to have an autograph, have their picture made with George. This is just a couple of examples. And like I said, I, got, I took 618 pictures. A lot of them are these ladies and whatnot making over George. <laughs> this is more of it and whatnot. Uh, George quickly became a celebrity on day one uh, when it was discovered that he was a vet and, and whatnot. And everybody wanted to meet George. They wanted to shake his hand. The men all wanted to shake his hand. The ladies wanted to give him hugs and kisses. So it was impressive. Look uh, on the deal, we were on the road and uh, I, I think going to the cemetery somewhere and uh, they were pulling all of the buses off to the right and uh, so our driver told us that uh, they were going to pull us off to the side and we would have to walk at least a half a mile to get back to the to the where we were going and he said so if George don't mind I'll use a little bit of his magic and we'll ride up there you know so uh he told me, he said, George, this little bench alongside the driver here, you come up and sit on it, and we'll let the host just sit in your seat. And so when we get there, we're going to use you, and we're going to ride right up to the front. So, <laughs> so he said, uh, when he got there, but he, the cop motioned us off to the left, you know, for this long trip for us. And so he put his head up, and the cop come over to him, and he asked him, he said, uh, what, what's happening? He said, this guy's on the program over there. We got to get him there. We don't have time to walk all that way. Huh? And he kept pointing to blame me, you know. And the cop said, okay, go ahead, you know. <laughs> so, so he always called the magic, you know, my magic. And we go out to eat. We go to eat, there'd be a long line. Uh, the, the, driver would, the driver would bring the uh, wheelchair along. And uh, you usually wheel me over in a taxi cab or something, you know. So then he'd have a wheelchair and they'd get me in a wheelchair. And uh, he would, as we was going into the restaurant, he would nudge all these people along with 
the walkway, there would be a half mile block and we're trying to get into the restaurant. He'd nudge everybody over and all my bus people would come in right behind me, you know. So, <laughs> so then when they got, later on when they were going to go out and eat somebody, they said, well, we have two or three places that you can eat. So we had to pay for them, supposedly. I didn't know really why, but so we were supposed to pay for our new meal. And uh, so they would ask him, where do you want to go? Well, the first time we went, um, I guess they nudged them over, and I could just go through the line, you know, and all these people followed me through that was with the bus on me, you know. Yeah. So then uh, they'd ask him, where do you want to go? They said, go well, wherever where George is going, you know. <laughs> But it's, so we just walk right still on through the line each time, you know. So, so it was it was different and some fun some fun spots to it, you know. So, go ahead, jump you. Uh, that also worked at the porta potty line. George went right up to the to the front of the line. So here's them crazy New York guys again. And this is the monument at Utah Beach. Uh, the pictures in the in the uh, uh, um, other left hand side are the also pictures of Utah Beach and whatnot. It's where they, um, I guess that's the end of our presentation. Carol, you're going to take over now. No, I'm good. That's, yeah, that's good. So, yeah, the Normandy 2019. Thank you. Um, okay, I don't have a kid in the band. I'm just a tag along. Um, this is us getting ready to leave. Uh, when this was an, this trip was announced, I asked Suzanne. I said, "Can anybody go on the f on the the trip?" on the, the, um, the shadow trip, and she said, I don't see why not. And then I thought, well, my band kid, and I use that term loosely, um, has graduated, but I asked Cheryl if she wanted to go. Well, then she wanted to go, but Ian wanted to go, and I, well, if I ask Ian, I've got to ask the rest of my kids, and I guess that means i got to ask my husband, too. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah. So... We ended up with a group of seven. We were the largest subgroup on the shadow trip who had no ties to the band at all. So uh, just to kind of share that. Um, so anyway, so we, we had this large group to take off. So um, Pastor John, if you can advance. So this is the town of Honfleur that Suzanne was saying very few people got to um, go to. The idea was all the buses, all the flights would come in at a variety of times between, I think, 7 in the morning, 6 or 7 in the morning, and 1 in the afternoon. They would drive us to this little town, and they would, you would have time to explore the town while all the rest of the buses were coming in, and then at 1 o'clock or, I guess, 3 o'clock after the last bus got there, then they would redistribute the luggage to your appropriate bus, and your bus would then take you to the hotel. The kids would get on their buses. The shadow trip people would get on their buses. Our flight came in. We had a few minutes, maybe 30 to 45 in the town. Um, it was disorganized because they didn't quite know how to pack. Our driver didn't know how to pack luggage in the bus. Um, I think my son and his friend were helping shove suitcases in because Lucas and I've traveled a lot. We, he knows how to pack a bus. Um, but anyway, so this town is it's, it's a harbor town. They've got a lot of, of boats and and uh, so let's go ahead and advance. I think there might be a couple of pictures from on floor. Um, there's Hayden in a in a in an archway 
off. I stayed on the bus because I was already wiped out. So um, some more scenes from the town. You know, uh, paved, you know, cobbled streets, um, very small vehicles, very narrow vehicles. Let's go ahead and, and okay, so then this was day one. This was at the Brittany American Cemetery. Some of these are very similar to other pictures. Um, let's go ahead. So this was an actual chapel, um, and I think you saw a couple of pictures of it from other folks. Let's go ahead and, and there's some pictures of the inside. Um, forward one, yeah. So inside there's a number of flags for the, of the liberating countries. Um, I didn't, and then there's some beautiful stained glass. Um, and then, you know, as, as Jim mentioned, all of, the, all of the graves face home. And as you can see, most of the graves are Christian graves with a cross, but there are Jewish graves. Can you go back? So with the Star of David. In the U.S. cemeteries, they're all the same stone, and then they can have their religious emblem engraved in it. But here it's, it's the actual um, symbol itself. So then let's go forward. And then, so here were, was a shot of all of the bands. I think this was one of Cheryl's. Yeah, so, I mean, they just basically, the kids were, there, there were kids everywhere. Um, yeah, I think all together we figured there were probably, between all of the buses, about 50 busloads. And what people haven't mentioned, we thought it was the University of Texas, but it was the University of Texas alumni band, and they had 300 in their band and 500 on their shadow trip. So they had a lot of buses. Wow. So. The, so, and I mean, they had a very simple uniform. You know, most of these you see, these are kids in their high school being uniforms. The University of Texas, the, the alumni, they had their own black pants, their own black shoes, a white shirt. They had an orange, hood, uh, orange windbreaker and a white hat, their white cowboy hat with their rain cover on their cowboy hat because it rained. Uh, okay, let's advance. And then, so these were some of the flowers that were... Um, the wreaths that were laid inside inside that chapel. Let's just keep keep going forward, please. Um, I think this was still at Brittany, yeah. And then this was a sh this didn't show out as well as I was hoping. Um, that's just a long sweep of grass leading up to the to that chapel. And then I mean it was it was really neat because it was a beautiful morning for that ceremony. Uh, it was clear, the sun was this bright blue, and there was a great big French flag and a great big American flag, and they were both just snapping. So I was able to get a couple of really good pictures of the flags. Um, and then, as we mentioned, we went on to Mont Saint-Michel. Um, and the, you know, there's school kids, you can kind of see them out here. This area where you see the sand, that all fills in with water when the tide comes in. <laughs> Um, but there were school kids out there, you know, digging around in the muck with their dirty little feet. When I was here, and I, it was kind of, I'm sure it was a lot of what George experienced. I was walking by myself through the town. Jeff and the kids went up in, to the abbey at the top. And I saw one of the other veterans being pushed through in a wheelchair. And a French family stopped the, the guy pushing the wheelchair so that they could have their child, they could take a picture of their child with the veteran. And the child was like, I don't know why I'm being asked to stand next to this man in a wheelchair, but okay, you know. Um, but so the, the French families were very excited to welcome the, the World War II vets. Yeah. Let's keep going forward, please. 
So uh, there's Ian and Cheryl and, and Jeff and Hayden up on the, um, in the, at the abbey on the top. So this was actually an abbey um, up on this, this island. And then there was a small town below it, um, very steep streets. Uh, Carol stayed to the streets and kind of just wandered in some of the little shops. I let the youngsters do whatever they wanted. Um, so there's some really great pictures of that uh, between Jeff and Cheryl and um, that they took of this abbey. Where was the abbey? So it was up on the top of Mont Saint Michel. So, which that is, that's the actual, I think, the name of the abbey. Um, and it's, it's right at the edge of. So, where Normandy and Brittany merge. It's right on the coastline. And then this is the, the so this is the picture of the, the setup from the day before where all of the, the dignitaries were. So, when President Trump was there and someone from the British government, uh, was the Queen there? I can't remember. No. But somebody, I think maybe the Prime Minister or somebody, I can't remember. They, I think the Prime Minister was there. Um, but this was the setup they had for them where they had a big red carpet and they had a big um, facade set up with a stage. And so then our kids just kind of filled in on that red carpet um, and, and performed. So, and let's go forward. And there were stands. Now, Jeff and I are actually, we've got the English Channel in the background. We're overlooking um, Omaha Beach is behind us. So there's a there's a shot of the channel in Omaha Beach. Thank you, Lucas, for finding your way to Omaha Beach. <laughs> yeah, um, Lucas and his buddy didn't stay for this ceremony. They went actually out to the beach and got some good beach shots. Um, and then these are these are the the graves. You can see the little tents in the background from the day before. There were all kinds of ceremonies for different units, I guess. Um, but these graves all had. Um, and hold it on this one for a minute. Those graves all had flags on them. Um, Jeff noticed this. This was someone who never left after D-Day. So um, I shared this with the, um, I shared this on my, on my blog, and I shared this one on the, I think on the Facebook group, that, you know, I don't know if there's still any family for this person, but he's now not forgotten, so. Right, was to find these, these folks. As you'll see, and again, here kind of the difference. We don't know how old he was. We don't know where he came. We know he was from Michigan. That's all we know. And then he, he did not live beyond D-Day. Um, and I think it really hit some of the kids, especially the boys that were about 17 and 18 when they started hearing stories from the vets at these ceremonies as to you know, this one's, oh, I, I lied about my age, or I got my mother to sign the paperwork so that I could enlist at 17, so that I could, you know, quit high school. And I think that really hit some of the, the high schoolers, especially. Okay, let's move on, move forward. Um, and I think this was something else that, Lucas, where was this? that are left, okay. Okay. And then keep going. And that, yeah, this is another one that Lucas took. Um, and you can see some of the, I guess the, were those, was that equipment that was just left there or uh, so just set there? Okay. Okay, let's move forward. And then when we got to Aramanches, we noticed a few guys in American service uniforms that obviously weren't American. 
uh, in, at, the, at the Normandy Cemetery. When we got to Aramantes, we saw a lot. So just kind of move forward through these, Pastor John. Um, a lot of old vehicles. Suzanne had some pictures in hers as well. Old motorcycles, guys sitting in, in uniform in a cafe. I said, I, I kind of suspect this is what it really would have looked like after liberation. Um, these are Europeans who, as an honor to their liberators, they, they dress in period clothing um, every year around this time. And they bring their old Jeeps, and there seem to be thousands of old Jeeps. Um, and they just, you know, walk around and, and in, in their period clothing. Um, the town of, of um, St. Mary Glace, I think, had two Army-Navy shops. I don't think there's any places in St. Louis left that have two, especially that close. Um, I had, I don't know, walked two miles by this point, I think. I was just hanging onto the sign. You just don't realize it. <laughs> we, yeah, we made a long trek. Um, and then I think these were at Juno Beach, right, Suzanne? Uh, Cheryl, were these yours? Still at Aramanches. Okay. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, all of the, and then this was the overlook. So, Aramanches is the town down below. It's a seaside resort now. So, they have a lot of houses, guest houses, bread and breakfast that people come and stay at. And, um, but, you know, Jeff and I joked that every old Jeep that was left behind by the U.S. Army, somebody saved and repaired. Um, and then these, this is where the, the 360 movie is. We didn't actually get to see that. Um, our tickets went to the kids because they showed up late and missed their movie time. Um, so this was kind of just a representation of what the actual soldiers had, had to survive, the, the obstacles and such that they did. As you can see, I mean, it's, it was, by this point in the day, it was gray, it was cloudy. Um, it kind of rained on us most afternoons. We got more old Jeeps. Uh, and then this big, the big cross and tanks. Um, you saw more U.S. and French flags, but you would occasionally see the Canadian flag, the um, and the British flag. And this, okay, so these are actually at Juno Beach. Um, So you can kind of, so this would have been another one of the landing spots. So very. <laughs> and then a, a memorial to De Gaulle. That's what that memorial is, is the Charles De Gaulle Memorial. The Charles De Gaulle Memorial. Mm -hmm. um, that's where he landed. But yeah, then another long shot. And then this is the town of St. Mary Glace. As we pointed out, the, they, they hang the guy, the dummy, from the, the church tower every year. Um, you played dead for two and a half hours. Yeah, so the, the, the actual soldier pretended to be dead for two and a half hours and hung there trying to avoid being captured, but was eventually captured, um, but then was shortly thereafter released. This is the, this is the town church. Um, and it's, it's just a real tiny little church, um, very um, European cathedral-ish looking inside, lots of stone. Go ahead, move forward, please. Um, some beautiful stained glass um, with, the, with representing the paratroopers that basically saved the town. So, I mean, I think this is probably the only time you'll see stained glass in a church with paratroopers on it. Um, and then here's the band. Um, I think this was, this was when they were doing their actual concert in the town square. Um, yeah, so there's one of the windows. Um, you can see a couple of paratroopers in the green here. And then that's the altar of the church. One of the windows is on one side of the church. One is on the other side. Um, this window has been updated. 
how many times? Four or five, three or four times for different five-year memorials. Okay. Yeah. So it was it was done at different at different times, but and then again up here at the top you can actually see parachutes there <clears throat> in the stained glass. Um, a different a different angle of our captive paratrooper. And they were, and they were from a variety of countries because we saw guys walking around, Bos uh, Croatian uniforms, uh, American uniforms, it's just a variety. There's there's George, uh, leading the parade. <laughs> um, and then this was, and I can't remember what this was of. It was a statue at the edge of town, commemorating a, something. Um, and then this was, <laughs> now this was not our stolen lunch, but a lot of times we got bag lunches. <laughs> one day we shouldn't have, but we actually got this one and it says on the lunch bag. Um, this was the day we left St. Mary Glace and we had a choice of ham or tuna fish. The tuna fish and the ham both had been sitting outside for three hours. In the sun. In the sun. I, I had ham. I I feel sorry for anybody that had that got stuck with tuna fish, but I couldn't resist throwing that picture in. Why do you think we stopped at McDonald's? <laughs> yeah, uh, that might be the end. I think so. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to throw out is, you know, we talked about it taking two hours on floor and then two hours beyond to Normandy. They don't really have highways like we do. They have a few highways, but they're not like US highways or even German autobahns. Imagine you're on a bus with your closest 55 favorite people on a two lane road. Old Highway 21, Old Highway 67, you know, twisty windy roads through the middle of little towns. So nothing was ever easy to get to. Yeah, <laughs> and about 3,000 roundabouts. No left turns. No left turns. So, uh, Cheryl, Ian, Lucas, Jeff, anything else you wanted to throw in? Okay. We, you know, I, I kept a blog. Um, I think I shared it with a couple people on Facebook. If you ever want to go back and, and uh, if you want to know, just let me, I'll let you know the, the address. Um, one of the pictures that Suzanne has, we had a couple of weird events. Um, they joked, see, George was on a different bus and George got treated like a VIP. The rest of us <laughs> had a little bit different experience. Um, while George was being wheeled to a lovely restaurant in town, we were taken to their version of Flying J for spaghetti, um, a place called Flunch. And that, you know, we, we joked about the fact that we pulled up to the gas pump and our, our tour guide says, go eat. And we're thinking, what? So, I, you know, I... That was the title of one of my blog uh, posts called What the Flunch. Um, but anyway, I, altogether the food was okay, but it wasn't, I don't think we got quite the same lovely experience. It was, it was okay, but it was a truck stop. Um, so we had a little bit different, and then there were a couple of events with um, box lunches. They would try to have lunches available for the kids, the bus drivers, and the tour directors didn't always know whether those were for their people or just the kids. And so we got lunches one day that we shouldn't have. And the band director got mad at us. Actually, it was that they didn't count people that had flown in on the other two flights is really where that map went. Awesome. 
Um, but then as Suzanne mentioned, there were three, the, the trip itself included three more days in Paris with some sightseeing. And then there was a London extension, which Jeff and, and the kids and I did. Um, and I can gladly share about that another time if you want. But um, so we did those, those three days. So yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl and Jeff loved running for the train to get to, uh, <laughs> to catch the train to go to London. And, and just one little aside from that, we took the 11 o'clock train, Suzanne took the one o'clock train on her own. She left the train station in London before we did. That's how late our bus was. So our joke was, hurry up, wait, but then be late. <laughs> that was kind of our trip. So, but we did fly safely and successfully and we all made it home. Yay. Thanks. Jim and Doug each offered George $100 for his hat, and he wouldn't, and he wouldn't sell it. So I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, where'd you go? Here's your. <coughs> Thank you for sharing your pictures. Um, I don't know if it was mentioned why Aromantius keeps coming up. Um, when the Allies landed on D-Day, uh, they landed, as you saw, on uh, unfinished beaches, okay? And uh, those beaches could not support the kind of, of munitions and other equipment that needed to be offloaded in the days following. And so the Allies planned to build an artificial harbor. And that artificial harbor was at Aromantius. So that's why Aromantius keeps coming up. And the D-Day Museum is at Aromantius. And, uh, and so after approximately a week to 10 days after uh, June 6th, uh, anything that was coming in was coming in at Aromantius. And they created a, an artificial harbor by sinking these huge concrete barges. And, uh, and it worked very effectively to get allied munitions and other equipment off, and also to offload soldiers that followed that first day. My dad um, landed in Normandy in August of 1944, and he landed at Aromantius. And so that's in case you wonder why Aromantius keeps coming up, but that's what makes it a significant city. A day. It was an incredible engineering feat uh, that the Allies had planned ahead. Um, uh, for two reasons. One, because they knew they needed a harbor. There was no natural harbor there along the channel. And the other reason was they had very little confidence in Montgomery's ability to take Con in any period of time. So uh, they, they made a plan B. Um, so young gentleman here I want you to uh, know about. Sean, come here. This is Suzanne's son. He had to work this evening. Uh, he doesn't normally wear his name tag on his shirt, but uh, <laughs> this way he knows who he is in case he forgets. But um, one of the pictures that you may have noticed early was um, uh, when Suzanne, in Suzanne's presentation, was a picture of Sean kneeling at the gravesite of a Missouri soldier. And he, I think you noted on the picture that he prayed and then he deposited sand that he had carried from Missouri to do that. How many kids took sand? Um, every kid. Every kid had at least two cards with them. Some kids had three to four. Okay, and they sought out Missouri graves or yep. just, okay. So and we could take a piece of home to them. Okay. Tell us about that. So uh, we visited two of the cemeteries, the one at uh, Brittany, which is the normally the one not seen. We saw that one on the actual jaw on the actual day. And then after that, we went to Normandy. Um, every kid had at least one card for each grave. So uh, we were given time either before for Brittany or after for Normandy to go out and seek the grave of the soldier and find them. And then uh, we were asked to do 
uh, memories of silence by them. So a lot of kids just kneeled and sat there and just closed their eyes and just thought a prayer or said a prayer. And then we were asked to deposit sand that we had been given and that we had collected over spring break uh, from different places around Missouri, wherever we went, so we could bring a piece of home from Missouri to them. Because airport regulations don't allow you to bring dirt of any kind from, to or from, but they do allow sand. So we were allowed to bring sand from wherever we could. Brayfield was quoted in saying, I don't care if you get it from a playground, just get some sand. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a really nice experience walking through the graveyard and seeing a bunch of other students from all the other countries doing the same thing, just looking through and finding graves and just depositing their own little marks. Some brought flags, some brought some coins they had just set down on. Uh, I think we were the only group to bring sand, but some of the other groups brought some, their own memorabilia to give to some flags or some gra graves. How did it feel to be there? It was nice. I really enjoyed it. It was, a, it was a really nice experience, to be honest. I enjoyed it a lot, even with all the fun hiccups that happened along the way. Okay. George, how old were you Eight. when you went into service? Eighteen. Okay. Good illustration of what you were talking about a while ago, Carol. I just turned 18. Okay. It's kind of nervous, you know, but didn't know what was happening. Sean, anything else you want to share with us? Not really. Glad, I think I think most of my life says so. Yep. You were you were a star in the earlier <laughs> earlier film. Yes, ma'am. Can I say something? Please. I'm a parent, and I went on the trip, and I just like to say that I really appreciate George going and making it possible because it meant a lot to me and to the kids. I think it just brought so much, um, made it real for them. Okay. Well, needless to say, we're very grateful that our band was able to go, and, and of course, we're proud of our kids that were part of that band, and, and uh, grateful for. Uh, did you have one or? I, I have one that was in the band before, um, okay. and this one's uh, in freshman this year. Okay, very good. Well, we're grateful Can that you could. Band kids stand up. Yeah, if <laughs> if you went on the trip. Uh, if you were in the band or part of the band, would you stand and allow us to say thank you to you for representing Missouri and Oakville so well? Thank you very much. Now, while you're, while you're still standing, if I could ask if all of you who actually went to Normandy as part of that trip, if you'd stand up for us. Thank you. You may be seated. And Sean, thank you, pal. When my wife and I had the privilege of being over there last year, there weren't quite as many people there <laughs> as, uh, as what you all had to endure. And so uh, we, we enjoyed the opportunity. Uh, it is a very humbling experience, isn't it? Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. How many of you are here willing to admit you're 80 years or older? <laughs> and God bless you. God bless you. All right. Yeah, I was, uh, I was born in 1947. It was my dad's way of celebrating that he didn't die in the war. So... <clears throat>
Well, when you consider World War I, the Great Depression, the Vietnam War, men walking on the moon, the divining, defining event of the 20th century was World War II. Our world had never seen a conflict like that before, and thank God has never seen one since. Um, it was a defining event in that century, and D-Day was a defining moment in that event. And um, so it is good that we would pause and, and reflect. Next year, of course, we'll have the 75th anniversary of VE Day and VJ Day. And uh, those two will be causes to celebrate. Any other, anyone want to share any thought? Those the rest of you who went on the trip or Anyone have a question for one of them? Yes, ma'am. I do have one. I didn't have a child on the trip, and I came as part of just one of with my friend Donna, who grew up with Georgia's, with Georgia's kids. Um, so I invited myself along and set up going. And because I didn't have a child, I decided to stay with these gentlemen for the good portion of the trip that we were there. And everyone that asks me about my trip, the first thing I say is, we had this World War II veteran, and he was so cool, and I hung out with him and his friends, and so that's like the, the highlight of my trip was being able to spend time with these guys. And George may not remember because it was a really busy week, but he committed to me that we're going back in five years for the 80th anniversary. <laughs> Yeah, well, we appreciate you going along, but in the back of my mind, I have a suspicion. It wasn't George or Jim or Doug, it was the hat. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing, yeah. I had just an amazing, amazing time with the, with the three of these gentlemen. It was just, it was. Yeah, there you, there you are. We're glad you got to go. Thank you for getting him there, because it was just a You bet. And for those who, have, who are guests, when our church first learned about this trip, of course, we were excited about it for our band members and uh, our students in our church family. And it was soon after that, and I don't know, Jim, because I couldn't hear everything you were saying, that Dixie came to me and said, you know what? Um, the band needs a mascot, a World War II veteran, and I'm going to nominate George for that. And if I nominate George and he gets it, will you help us? and we need to raise money for George to go. And um, one of the pictures in Jim's presentation, one of the first pictures is a picture of myself and George. One of our deacons is has, handing George a, an envelope with $1,000 cash that was in addition to our paying for his trip. Um, 
George, we love you, and we wanted you to go, and we are so honored that you were able to go. And what a well, no, that's fine. You did, you did fine. You did fine. But, but we are honored as a church family to have had an opportunity to put you in that place for that time. And uh, it was well, well deserved. All right. Anything else? Someone, someone asked me a while ago that, you know, or earlier said that we kind of underplanned for this evening. We honestly had no idea how many would come. Uh, we are honored that all of you are here. And we hope that you found the, in, the evening enjoyable and informational, as well as uh, inspiring for those who were able to go and share the trip. Uh, was there a question or comment? I'm sorry, please. That's okay. Um, at each of the ceremonies in Normandy, um, they had a French person dignitary speak. And I think it's kind of interesting that the second day, one of the things that she said really stuck out to me. She said, you know, so many of these men gave their lives. To go out and have their own families, and she said, "I feel like we are their children. They um, could, I mean, that they saved them." And putting it in that perspective, why they are so grateful for the ultimate sacrifice, it was really humbling for me to um, to see their gratitude mm -hmm. for us because we, I don't, I think we take it for granted. And in spite of the differences that our countries have had, they have done a good job of educating their children, their future generations, of really what was done for them. And um, uh, when Brenda and I were over there a year before, when we visited over there, when people found out that we were Americans, um, we sensed, you know, from conversations and how we were treated, that there was still that strong undercurrent of gratitude. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am, Dixie. Okay, well, we're going to finish with this. And he asked me if he could tell it, and I said, well, maybe not. But George, tell us about Pittsburgh. About Pittsburgh. Was it Pittsburgh? Stand up for us so they can hear you, please. In fact, come up here. And I'll, I'll embellish your story ministerially, okay? Now, all of us have had the... Uh, the aggravation of, of going through security at the airport and having to remove portions of clothing that we can't imagine would be a threat to national security. Okay, that's, that's just the basis. That anyway, I told him there that I had been halfway around the world, you know, and coming back and had never been asked to move, remove my belt or my pants, you know. And, uh, so therefore, uh, they said they wanted my belt off. And I said, uh, I can't take it off. And I, I said, no. And she, she said, you're going to take your belt off? And I said, no, I can't. And she said, you're refusing to take your belt off? And I said, I'm not refusing. I'm just telling you I can't take it off <laughs> under these circumstances. And she said, why not? I said, well, my arms are not long enough to go. And my belt had been... Uh, abused a little bit, it had a, some leather sticking up on you couldn't get it through the loops, you know. And I said, I can't, I can't do that. And I said, and if I uh, use both hands to get it, then my pants will fall off, you know. <laughs> and I, she, I said, so, but if you really want me to take them off, you order me, and I'll take them off, and I can lay them up over the table, and I can take the belt out then. And she said, she wouldn't say anything. 
And I said, but that's the only idea. I said, if you, she kept on, are you refusing to take it off? And I said, no, I'm asking you, do you, will you want to take it off for me? She said, no. And I said, and she said, well, uh, but I need you to take your belt off. And I said, well, I can if I take my pants off, you know. And I said, so, uh, you just tell me whether you want me to take my pants off or not, you know. I said, so she said, she just stood up with her arms crossed and wouldn't say anything. I told her, I said, my man, uh, John is holding the, the flight up over there, telling them that uh, I'll be there as soon as they uh, get me run through this deal, so. And she, so I said, so what do you want? You want my belt off? And I can't get my belt off. And I had my buckle in my hand. I told her, I said, here it is, here's the buckle off of it, you know. And uh, she said, uh, now you have to have to take your belt off. And I said, well, you tell me to take my belt off, and I'll take my, tell me to take my pants off, and I'll take my pants off. And uh, so, anyway, I said, she said, I got the buckle in my hand here. I said, uh, you can see there's nothing wrong with it. And I said, but like that watch, I got that old cheap watch on, you know. I said, you didn't ask me to take it off. She said, well, they've made a provision for the belt, uh, for the watch, you know. And I said, well, why don't I take the watch off, lay it on the table up here, then I'll hold the buck over my watch, where my watch is at, and I will tell that machine that this is the new time act, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she kept on going, I finally told her, I said, do you have a supervisor? And she said, yes. And I said, well, have your supervisor come over here, and I'll explain to him, God, I gotta catch that plane, you know. So the supervisor came over, and uh, she said, can I help you? And I said, I don't know, you can take my belt off, they want my belt off. <laughs> and uh, so she said, uh, oh, what, what about the belt? I said, well, it's defective, you can't get it through the loop, so I can't you without taking my pants off. I said, so if you want me to take my pants off, you just say, take your pants off, and I'll take them off. I said, I don't know what the police say about it. And I don't know what the news media would think about it. Maybe a chuckle out of them, you know. I said, I don't know what the, the airlines would think about it. They have to be standing out here dressed, taking my pants off in the public, you know. So, so anyway, she finally told look at this guy and said, just pass him through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The end of that story is if you happen to have to go through Pittsburgh in the next six months, expect to have more trouble thanks to George Crafton, okay? All right. George, thanks for sharing that with us. All right. This has been a delightful evening. I certainly appreciate those of you who prepared things and shared with us. And again, we certainly welcome our guests who are with us tonight. And uh, we have a good time at First Baptist Church of Oakville. And, and uh, for those of you who are here visiting with us, we're glad you had an opportunity to sample that this evening. And I would remind you once again, if any of you have an interest, there are registration slips and pins back there on the table at the corner. Uh, if you know of someone you'd like to register for our soccer VBS camp next week, please do that. Other than that, if anyone has anything else to say, unless they do, we're ready to say our benediction and say thank you for coming and good night. Walter, you're standing. Would you mind lead us, please? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you.